Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Metropolitan Museum. It's a great pleasure to welcome you here for the beginnings of the three-month run of our exhibition, Wonder of the Age, Master Painters of India, 1100, 1900. Um, I hope many of you have seen the show already. Um, this ex the talks this afternoon, I think, will add and, and uh, em embellish uh, much of what you've seen already in the exhibition. And as all of you will know who have been, uh, the exhibition is a demanding exhibition. It will require uh, multiple visits. Uh, it certainly has multiple layers. It's not a single narrative story, the history of painting in India. Um, it is a complex one. There's, there's a labyrinthine and multi-layered as the history of painting in Europe. And this exhibition is really attempting to set that out in a very clear um, way, focusing on the 40 uh, biographies of individual named artists uh, who've been brought into the foreground by the scholarship of many scholars over the last 20 years and longer. And this exhibition really is a, an attempt to both present that to a broader audience and acknowledge the contribution of the many scholars that have made this, made this possible. So it is, in a sense, a, a turning point, we hope, in the, in the study of the field. Uh, in some respects, I think, in the public arena, it's a coming of age of the, the study of Indian painting. And this afternoon, we have three of the most, um, uh, three very eminent speakers to present to you on aspects of the exhibition. I should begin, of course, uh, by reiterating the exhibition was uh, made possible uh, through uh, our co cooperation with the Museum Riedberg in, in, in Zurich, who initiated this exhibition. Uh, the show itself was uh, conceived by three of the most eminent uh, scholars of our generation, uh, Professor Bian Goswami, uh, Dr. Marlow Beach, and uh, Dr. Eberhard Fischer, two of those three uh, three wise men, if I may call them that, are with us this afternoon. We'll be speaking to you. Um, and our, th our third speaker um, uh, comes from the, uh, the Windsor Castle Library of Her Majesty the Queen. Um, the exhibition is sponsored by MetLife Foundation and Novartis, both of whom have been enormously supportive in this um, less than uh, buoyant economic situation. Both corporates have been extremely generous and made this exhibition uh, possible. It's not been an inexpensive exercise to bring together some 30 lenders for, from three continents and uh, some nearly 200 works. It's been a complex uh, exercise um, which uh, undertaken um, as I say, jointly with, with the Rietberg Museum in Zurich, uh, who took the lead on, 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 on negotiating uh, many of the majority of the loans. Now, to begin the afternoon, we're on a fairly tight, tight schedule. Uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, our, our first speaker, Mr. Oliver Everett, um, who has come to us. Uh, he's a retired um, librarian of Windsor Castle Library of the Queen's Collection. Uh, he trained first at Cambridge, uh, at Tufts University in Massachusetts, and at LSE, London School of Economics. Uh, worked in the diplomatic corps uh, for, for some, some years stationed in India, amongst other places, uh, has lectured very broadly uh, around the world. Uh, but his principal uh, uh, association is with the um, Mughal collections at the Windsor Castle Library, and particularly uh, the Padshah Name, the most famous uh, Shah Jahan album uh, preserved in, in the royal collections. Um, and that's the subject on which he'll speak this afternoon. Um, the Life and Times of Emperor Shah Jahan, Mughal painting at the Senate. Could you please welcome Mr. Oliver Everett? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, John. And I should really start by saying how my involvement in this subject arose. I was sitting in my office at the Royal Library at Windsor Castle in 1991, and in comes an American professor of Islamic art. Um, and he had been studying Indian Mughal painting for, I think, over 30 years. He's a world expert on Mughal painting. Um, and his name uh, was Milo Beach, and he's sitting right there. So I'm some, anyway, what Milo said to me, his in effect was, you do know that you've got the best Mughal paintings in the world in your library. Uh, to my shame, uh, but not to my surprise, I actually had no idea. <laughs> However, I was loath to admit this to Milo, and so I'm, I regret to say I bluffed, and I said, well, of course, but do tell me more. And Milo told me a great deal more, and he persuaded me to allow him to exhibit the 44 paintings in the book which he was referring to. The book which John has mentioned is called the Padshah Nama, which is the Persian word for the chronicle of the king of the world. And this was, um, is, the unique chronicle of the life and times of the Indian Mughal emperor Shah Jahan. And the book itself um, looks like this. 
if uh, I think lights, yes, exactly. That's the out, uh, not a very prepossessing outside of the book. It's a lacquer binding that was put on uh, much later. The, I should here mention that the book uh, was created during the reign of Shah Jahan, 1628 to 1658, but it was not bound at the time. It was bound much later. And so this is an 18th century binding. And in, let's, if we go on, this is what a typical opening looks like. Um, there are 44 of these uh, paintings. Most of them, as you will see in the exhibition upstairs, are about the size, slightly more than letterhead, eight and a half, nine inches by 12. And there they are. And um, on the left-hand side, you will see uh, Persian text. Persian was the court language of the Mughal Empire. And so that is um, what we're dealing with. We're going to go in. The first page looks like this. There's a double spread on the right-hand side. There's this gentleman. He is not our hero, Shah Jahan. He is someone, I'm sure, however, that you will have heard of, called Timur, or Tamerlane, or Tamburlaine. Yes, just to remind you, uh, Tamburlaine was a Turco-Mongol thug who spent most of his life killing many other people. Um, for instance, he laid waste to the city of Delhi in 1398 and killed um, very many um, uh, thousands of people. However, the reason that he appears here is because um, for the Mughal em emperors, they trace their lineage back to Timur. This gives the Mughal emperors their um, authenticity. So that is why um, Timur is there. He is looking across the page at our hero. There is Shah Jahan, um, and this is one uh, of the 44 paintings uh, in uh, the manuscript. We go on. Uh, just, I'd just like to remind you of the so-called six great moguls. Um, they're starting with uh, Babur, uh, up at the top here, then Humayun. The three that we're going to be talking about are Akbar, who had a very long reign, about the same as Queen Elizabeth I in England, his son Jahangir, and his son Shah Jahan. But I'd like to mention a couple of things here. That, particularly about Akbar. Akbar was a great patron of the arts. He had a huge artist studio, almost 90 full-time artists in his studio. But the other important thing about Akbar to remember is that he was very liberal. He allowed Hindus, um, um, uh, Christians, any religion to thrive. He was not a strict Muslim, as you might expect from a, a, a Mughal emperor. Um, and it was he who allowed, for instance, Jesuits to come into India, and also he allowed Western copies of Western art to come into India, and therefore Mughal painting began to be influenced by Western art. Before that, it had originated really from Persian art, but I'll come back to that in a few minutes' time. The other thing uh, to mention is that, um, I don't know if you know anything about the Mughal emperors, uh, do you know what I mean by primogeniture? In other words, the oldest son becomes emperor. That did not take place in the uh, Mughal Empire. What happened was, I'm afraid, is the son who became the next emperor was the one who most skillfully killed all his brothers. I think, I don't know if you've heard, but one comment made about the Mughal emperors was that the Mughal emperors made the mafia look like Sunday school teachers. They were pretty ruthless. Uh, anyway, the other thing uh, to notice here is the importance in the Mughal Empire of the Prime Minister. Now, I'd just like to mention two of them. One is a man called Itimud Dawla, who is over there. He was a Persian nobleman uh, who became Prime Minister to Jahangir. And his son, Azaf Khan, became Prime Minister to Shah Jahan. And Itimud Dawla's daughter, Nur Jahan, who be became the favorite wife of Jahangir. But, and also, um, just to follow that line down, Itimud Dawla, Azaf Khan, a daughter, was called Mumtaz Mahal, who some of you may remember was the favorite wife of Shah Jahan, for whom the Taj Mahal was built. Now let's go on, and we hope. Uh, yes. Whoops. Okay, well, here we go. There we are. Geographically, our story is going to start in the year 1615 um, because the chronicle of the life of Shah Jahan begins before he becomes emperor. So in 1615, he is still um, the, the, a prince. He's no, it, actually, he's not called Shah Jahan yet. He's called Prince Koram, um, and he is the third son of his father, Jahangir. 
and uh, he is um, sent into battle um, by his father, the Emperor Jahangir, uh, near the city some of you may have heard of called Udaipur, in the, city on, in the state of Miwa. So our first picture is going to be near the city of Udaipur in the state of Miwa. And then after that battle, he reports back to his father in the um, Mughal holy city of Ajmer, which is just there. Because for the Mughal emperors, they would move their capital around depending where the crisis was. If there was peace, uh, it was usually in Agra, which is there, or Delhi subsequently, which is there. So that's the first two pictures I'm going to show you, is one is near Udaipur and the next in Ajmer. Then two years later, in uh, 1617, we're going to the city of Mandu, just there, because there was trouble in central India, the Deccan here. So there is the first miniature. Now, as I mentioned, the size of these pictures, as you'll see upstairs, is about eight and a half or nine inches by about 11, 12 inches, uh, quite small. They are brilliantly executed. Um, some of these took about two years to complete. Um, and these paintings, by the time we get to Shah Jahan, there are 25 full-time artists in his studio, of which, of those 25, 14 produced these paintings that we're going to be looking at, and I'll identify some of them. So this is the future Shah Jahan, Prince Koram. He's age 23 here, and he has just beaten the Rana of Miwa, who is there. And Milo Beach, sitting here, has identified almost everybody in each picture. So the whole thing absolutely comes to life, and the detail is spectacular. I ought to just mention very briefly, it's covered upstairs very well, the method that they used. You can still see it being done in Jaipur. It's done in watercolour with very fine squirrel-haired brushes. I think they used magnifying glasses for the detail, um, and they used... Um, 11 or 12 watercolour stones that they scratch on a piece of slate in a piece of water and they produce these watercolours which are absolutely fantastic. The detail, and what I'm going to do in most of them is show you a detail from each. So this is by an artist. By the way, in the studio, uh, do you remember I said that Akbar was very liberal? So you had some Muslims, you had some Hindus, uh, any religion as long as they were the best artists. So let's have a look at the detail. So there you have it. If you're a student of tech, Indian textiles or Indian jewellery, you can study these and see the detail, which uh, is fantastic. So there is um, our future hero, age 23. And there, oh yes, for instance, that's the general, Abdullah Khan, as you can see, an absolute thug. Anyway, let's go on, and let's have, um, this is the scene um, at the uh, city of Ajmer that I mentioned, which was where um, uh, the future Shah Jahan's father, the Emperor Jahangir, there we have a, a court scene, there is Jahangir, there is the future Shah Jahan paying respects to his father, and I will be giving you a blow-up of this in a minute, but, but just before I do, I'll mention the, some of the artists. This is by an artist you'll see represented upstairs called Balchand. Balchand, and I don't know if some of you, I'm sure you used to see Alfred Hitchcock films, movies, sorry. Um, do you remember Alfred Hitchcock inclu included himself in some of his films, movies, yes? Um, well, this is what happened here, too, because um, here is the artist Balchand, and there he is just there. I'll show you a blow-up of that, so don't worry. Um, and also, um, as a lot of these characters, there is the Prime Minister, Itamud Adawla, and his son, Azaf Khan, the uh, future Prime Minister, and many others. 